What's up? We're back yet again. BKFC show. Uh, you know, better late than ever. We run on social standard time here, SST. Hey. I'm here with my main man, Rafa Fui. What's, What's up, up, Rob? Up? How you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Uh, Elf, another fun show, an awesome show, an amazing show. The fans in Biloxi, shout out to you. You guys were loud. You guys are proud, and you guys are great. We're going to talk about that today. There's so much to talk about. I have my minute before the show format here, so I'm going to read off my phone. All right. We're going to be talking about Manny Pacquiao <laughs> and uh, what happened with him, and maybe it's time to call it a career. We'll get to that in a couple minutes mm-hmm. one of our trending topics. BKFC drama. We're going to have Melvin Gillard on today to talk Big about that drama, DQ. Man. I want to hear what he has to say about that. I have a lot of questions for him. Uh, and it, it's also going to be uh, it's going to be you know fun because we're going to be talking to him, and he's going to give us uncensored, uncensored views. We always get that here. And then on top of that, we're going to be – let's see what else we have. <laughs> we're going to be talking about Total Line UK – and where we're breaking ground in Nebraska at BKFC 21, a lot of new states coming on board, and that's exciting. I know uh, David Feldman was on the air at BKFC mm-hmm. 20 talking about that, including New York. I'm excited for that as well. We're going to get into all that, but let's start with the trending topics first because we have Melvin Gillard coming on in just a couple of minutes. Uh, trending topics. Let's talk about Manny Pacquiao right away. Let's talk about it, man. So I, what did you think of the fight? Uh, I think it's time the call quits. Yeah. I mean, the man has won more titles and more divisions than maybe any fighter has done in history. He is a statesman. He's done a lot in the community. Um, He's a great ambassador for the sport, but I think it's time to call it quits, man. I I think his fighting career is in the background or should be in the background at this point, and this is a very controversial topic. Who am I to tell him to hang it up? Oh, you're Rob. You're on the BKFC show. You should be listening to everything we say. You but, know that. You know, no, I, I, know I, really you want, I really want to get the feedback. You know, We talk about this a lot is when do you call it quits? When is time... <laughs> As an athlete, I think that's a hard thing to do. Even sometimes, if you there, there's certain things that I've seen, like certain guys uh, know when it's time. They know and they say, "I don't want to tarnish my legacy." There's other guys that know it's time, but it, it's it's like a it's like a lover almost to them. It's like their mistress; they can't give it up. They, it's like a drug, the competition. Yeah. So I think the best thing for Pacquiao, he could give it up, go rest his head and his body on that ton of money he's made, like Scrooge McDuck. He's probably like Ducktail swimming through the money. And then I think what happens is he continues to be an ambassador for the sport. Mm-hmm. He continues to show up. He does it on his own terms. He can get endorsement deals, so he can still be a part of it in a certain way. Maybe train some new guys, bring them in. There's still a spot for Manny Pacquiao. I don't. I mean, there's always going to be. And and that's what I love about you know your your love of life, wrestling, professional wrestling. They do a lot with taking wrestlers, and you know when when they're done with their career, they move on to management, they move on to behind the scenes. Yeah. But they're still involved in the sport. I would love to see him as a trainer. I would love to see Mike right. Tyson as a trainer. Straight up. Yeah. Because think about it. I mean, what they're, these are these elite level athletes, not just fighters. They're athletes, elite. Mm-hmm. Okay. And now you have this new crop of people coming in. And they're able to mentor. They're able to get their love of it out, get what they need out, and give what they've learned to help the fight game and help us as fans enjoy it more by training those guys. So I would love to see Manny Pacquiao start doing that. Uh, do you think Triller's going to sign him up when he, when he retires? If he retires for a fight, I guarantee. Oh, uh, what they'll for, for for their uh, in like two years commentating crew? Something? No, to fight. He'll do it like two uh, years gotcha. against like a you know whoever. Whoever the big influencer is at the time. I know. What Maybe it'll be against Big Ben. I know he's in the chat. He's kind of an influencer. Hi, Big Ben. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> what Maybe. do you guys think in the chat? I don't mean to cut you off, Rob. What do you guys think in the chat? Do you think it's time for Manny Pacquiao to hang it up? Let us know. We'd love to know. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to know, man. We can have this conversation. And it's pretty hot. So It is pretty hot. It's hot in here. Uh, listen, we have a lot of other stuff coming up. If you're just tuning in, we have Melvin Gillard coming on to talk about the controversial DQ decision that just happened at BKFC 20. A lot of stuff that we have to ask Let's him. Let's talk about that really Let's, fast. As we you were live. Yeah. I was not live at this event, but I was watching it on, you know, I was streaming it. Hmm. Now, I think the ref did a absolutely shitty job. And the, it's... It's the ref's job to get in front and to stop the fight, especially if he thinks a fighter is down. Like, yes. What are you waiting for? Did you order Uber and you're waiting your Uber <laughs> to get delivered prior to saying, oh, hold on, he's down. If you think he's down, then go count or do what you're supposed to do. Don't, you know, uh... He's like shell-shocked or something. Yeah, and then get mad at Melvin Gillard for throwing a punch. I looked, I looked at it from a couple different angles. Yeah. And he kept fighting. The ref didn't stop. Now, should he have thrown that punch? He was going down, but his knee wasn't down. But here's the thing. Uh, something that I recently figured out, I, I had the same comment. I'm like, his knee wasn't down. He threw the punch, mm-hmm. but he was against the ropes a little bit. And I, don't, I don't think he did but that. We have, do- we have a slow-mo of it we can watch. I mean, okay. we, we can check it out if you want to see it yourself. I think uh, Lord Evan Zentor caught this, our content director. I don't miss. And there you go. 
right. See, all right. Now what watch. the ref is screaming right now down. Yeah, and now I, I must say, as we watch this, it looks slower because mm -hmm. it's in slow mo. You got to keep mm -hmm. that up. You know, if it was in faster motion, it might look a little differently to you. But you're right. We have fast motion now. Let's let's look at that. <laughs> Sped up. Regular motion. And keep in mind, you're in a fight. I mean, you're in a fight. Uh, if I'm a professional fighter or any kind of fight, I'm not going to stop fighting and, and risk losing in any way. Who knows what could happen until the ref steps in between. Yeah, can we, I'm sorry. Can we watch it in slow motion one more time, please? This just is, just, just so the... Uh, five times real speed. This is like slowed down five times. Slowed down five times here. Let's see. So one second. I didn't throw the... No, I, see, I can see five Wayne yelling. Was Wayne was second. yelling. Mm -hmm. You can see Wayne yelling. And then Wayne pulls him back. Did he actually hit him? Was it a landed it, it shot? Like it, for me, I don't know for sure, but for mm -hmm. me, it looked like he kind of glanced him, but still, so like he swung. Mm -hmm. um, again, we're going to see what Melvin has to say about this in a couple minutes when he calls in, but it, it's a very interesting topic because if we watch it, and again, in the comments, we'd like to hear from you as it well. It doesn't look like he hit him, but still, yeah. I mean, Should he have been DQ'd for that? He got disqualified So what does, I'm not in the back, and I don't know what, you know, the pre-meeting you know meeting with the fighters and what the ref goes through and what their stipulations are. Do they say down means that's it? I tell you, am I yeah, wrong? In the, in the pre-fight meeting with the referees and the fighters and everybody, basically they say that the when I yell down, you step away from the fighter. Uh, so here's, here's, so I, I, might, I might be wrong. I have to take back everything I said. Right? Take anything back? Nothing. I have to contest that a little bit I, because if they're saying when I yell down, stay away from the fighter. Maybe I'm wrong, but I would guess that being a fighter, maybe it's your job to listen to the ref. Obviously, it's part of the sport. Mm -hmm. But if you're a fighter and you're in the moment and you don't hear down, it's loud in there. Should the ref step between? I wouldn't want to step between these two guys, but the ref's being paid to do that. I don't know. That's the question I'm asking. Let us know in the chat. We'd like to know what you have to say. Well, I mean, in, in mixed martial arts, right? If you're ground and pounding somebody, the ref literally will come and tackle you to ensure that no more damage is done to your opponent. So the ref does step in. Now, is that part of the BKFC rules for the refs to hop in? I would assume so to stop the action, to help um, you know anyone from taking further unnecessary damage. Again, though, Rob, it's a growing sport, as we talk about all the time. We're still fairly new. So stuff like this happens, and then uh, I feel like we have to figure it out so it won't happen again. This happened twice. I know. Galar, to the same man. guy he in the same state. He's going to be fired up when he comes on. He should be. I'd be like, oh, where's my next fight? Biloxi? <laughs> no, Fuck I'm you. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rob. Yeah, I'm He's done. Like, I'm good, man. Shh. No, Dude. thanks. Sorry well, for dropping the F-bomb hey, to all the... Hey, that's you. That's your... So we have a zoom into the punch here. Let's see. Let's see if it connected here. I mean, everyone was talking about this. And a lot of the fighters, I will say... Ooh. Okay, yeah, kind of. He glanced him. Yeah, I mean, it hit him. It's like forearm hit him. Yeah, it wasn't really the Knuckles fist. didn't hit his face. No. So a lot of the fighters were actually saying, I overheard it over here them and just in talking with them, that they weren't going to stop swinging until a ref gets in, in, in between. And that's okay. at least the consensus. What I heard, a couple said sure. that. So, I mean, that's how I look at it. But I don't know where we go from here. I know we have Melvin Gillard, like I said, coming on. I want to get his side of the story. Mm -hmm. We can both talk about it. Lord Evan Zentar can talk about it. Dave can talk about it. We can all talk about it. But we weren't in the squared circle. There's three guys in there. Mm -hmm. And we're going to hear from one of them in a couple minutes, which excites me. I heard that when we texted him to come on, um, he didn't even, he's like, immediately, he's like, yes. Sure. Then another text came in like, immediately. I'd love to be on. Like He's all excited so about it. So the official was, he lost from DQ for striking a down. To, is there like I, an official I, I believe statement? that was the decision. Okay. Um, and, and that's one of the questions I want to talk to him about. Like, how does he feel? Does he want mm -hmm. to see that overturned? Does he want to see? Yeah, I was going to say, is he going to protest that or? And we're going to find out in a couple minutes. Right, he's cool. running like we are, though, on social standard time, a little late. Uh, 12.15, he's due. It's 12.15 now. We'll talk to him in a couple minutes. There's so much to unpack from this card. Uh, before we get to Melvin Galore, let's just talk about a couple more things, and then we can actually go down the whole card later. Uh, what I'd like to do is I would like to talk about everything from um, Biloxi, from the, the, the place we were in. Uh, that's really important. Mm -hmm. It was a wonderful arena. Uh, it, it was an incredible atmosphere. I don't know how it came off on television, dude, but those crowd sounded amazing. Yo, Biloxi people are loud, Hi, dude. They're loud. I love it. Yeah, they, they're really loud. Uh, and they, <laughs> they, I mean, I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. I was actually it's it's mm -hmm. so it's still kind of new to me since we still have more and more fans showing up every time to see how loud they're going to get. And they love their hometown boys, man. They love their hometown boys. Um, 
what was your favorite fight of the night as we sit here and we wait for Melvin to call in? Dude, Bobby Taylor. I don't know, <laughs> man. Yeah, he right? is the real, he's the new Randy Couture. He is Captain America. I saw the photos from Wayne's. I'm like, whoa. Looks great. Yeah. The conditioning looks amazing. Abs on came, abs, dude. Yeah. He came out in the prelims. I'm like, yeah, here we go. It's going to be a good fight. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, that was fast. And he looked impressive. I yeah. was very impressed by his performance for sure. I was impressed by him, too. Uh, there's so much impressiveness on that show. I mean, you could start. I, I actually enjoy uh, Scott O'Shaughnessy, the Irish Spartan. I was enjoying mm -hmm. watching him. Uh, but aside from him, I think that for me, I mean, look, I liked the main event. I, I thought it was good. I like, and we'll talk about that later. I liked how, how Reggie showed up as mm -hmm. best he could. And I liked how I really like Johnny. And I have some observations on Johnny that I want to talk about later. And I also really enjoyed, well, Quentin Henry's always fun to watch uh, versus Jay Fish. But I really enjoyed the debut of Alan Belcher. I feel like he's found his lane here. Uh, and, you know, Tony Lopez, we said it. He's I a know, tough customer. Man. He should be tough customer, Tony Lopez. This guy doesn't mess around. And he doesn't. And his record doesn't truly reflect his skill set. He's I just, mean, and he's he just a, he, tough. He's a losing record, but Chris Lytle said it best. He's a slow starter. He knows he's a slow starter. Yeah, he admitted that. He started moving in the fourth and fifth, and I'm like, whoa, Alan better put him away or come up with another game plan because Tony is finding his he's finding his traction, man. And but Tony, like we said, he's tough. He mm -hmm. can take shots. He can give shots. I mean, it, it's just watching him. He's like the Terminator. Tony can knock that guy, uh, knock that guy out. I man. wonder if any. I, I have to look <laughs> at his record. To see, I don't think anybody in BKFC ever knocked him out, right? Uh, I'm not sure. You no. know, he's got a record that I think he has like over 70 some odd, you know, he's fights like, in his career. So I, we'd have to really go through that. I brought him in to do, uh, the, we call it the pre-hype package, like the interview for that. Mm -hmm. The things you see on TV. Cause I, I kind of interview these guys and I thought everything I've seen of this guy, I've never met him. I thought, wow, he's going to be this killer. He's going to be not hard to deal with, but he's going to be an interesting guy to deal with. And he came in, he was like, he was like the chillest dude ever he just enjoys fighting but you got another guy that enjoys fighting we have him on zoom right now uh melvin gillard part of a a really really strange situation twice now in biloxi it's happened to you, melvin i'm sorry to say that but we wanted to get you on there's, there's a lot to unpack here with what happened in your fight and uh i mean the first things first i i just wonder i mean i saw that harris stevenson said that it's one of those situations when he's heading into this fight where you're fighting your idols and they're becoming your rivals. So Harris probably wasn't happy with this decision either, and I'm sure you weren't. Well, I wasn't happy with how the referee handled the situation. I mean, he was standing there. I was waiting for him to intervene before I even threw the last punch. He didn't do anything, and when, he, when I threw the punch, I actually missed. I didn't hit him. I didn't know that his knees weren't down until I saw the video. But that night in the ring, I was arguing my point that I didn't hit him. I'm like, I missed. And the ref was like, no, I saw you hit him. I'm like, dude, I swung past him. And I mean, I, I damn near punched the back of the, the, the little backboard. So that was my argument in that moment. But he was like, shut up. You know, he got real aggressive with me. So I was like, why are you being aggressive? I'm trying to tell you that I didn't do anything. And then I was yelling, like, watch the video. Y'all need to run the video back and watch the video. Well, now I get the DQ. So then few days later, I get back home to Denver. There's an, there's an um, Instagram video showing right now. And technically speaking, he wasn't even down. His knees, his knees were still off the mat. So even if I really would have caught him and landed the punch, I mean, I, I'm still in the right. I mean, what is the ref's job to save the fight? It's not my job to do his job. I mean, I'm in there to fight. And I wasn't trying to do anything like that was intentional, like intentionally wrong or anything like that. I'm not a dirty fighter. I was just like, all right, he's, if he's not going to stop the fight, I guess he still thinks he's up. So I swung. But I mean, I don't know, man. Like now I'm looking at him like they have to, they have to overturn it. I mean, because technically there was no foul there. So I should be, I should get the win. I should get a knockout on him. So, I mean, I so what's going on. Melvin, where are we at with that? I mean, have you talked to the commission? Who have you talked to? Yeah. Are, are, are they in route to overturning that, do you think? Yeah, my, my management is already working on it. So it's in, it's in the process, but it shouldn't even got to all that, man. I mean, I mean, I mean, it was a great, great fight. I mean, I owned him the whole fight. He didn't want to be in the ring with me. But for him to get a win like that of a bogus call when the rough is staring right at me, I mean, he was on that the right side of me. He can see me swing. Of course. I mean, a blind man can see that I missed the punch because I, I just missed because right as I was swinging, the referee started to yell and I took my eyes off him and then that's when I, I noticed I missed. So I don't know. 
And Melvin, no, no, we I actually just we watched it with all the fans. We watched it live. We watched it in uh, normal speed. We watched it in half speed. And we were thinking about playing it again. And we'll give you by the play by play commentating uh, because unfortunately you can't watch it with us. But we're gonna play it for the fans. We're gonna watch it and just kind of give you know um, the play by play and get your feedback from it. What the you know what the ref said, and then just get your take right. from there. Okay. Awesome. We gonna roll it. So we're all awesome, going to watch awesome. it together. We're, we're, we're all going to told from the Perfect. producers, we're all cool. going to watch it together. That's great. Melvin will hopefully be able to see that too. And as we wait, before we get to the video, I mean, we might as well ask you this. Uh, your emotions were running high, and obviously they still are. Um, any message directly to the referee? I mean, no, I just, I mean, what can I say? I mean, he's the ref. If I took it too far, I would have got suspended, probably fine. I mean, but I didn't like the way the man talked to me. Like, I'm trying to explain to him, and I was, I mean, I'm a fighter, so I'm emotional at the moment. But he's like, you need to shut up. You need to shut up. I'm like, who the fuck are you talking to? I'm like, I'm not a child, bro. I'm a grown-ass man. You're not going to talk to me like that. You mad because you calling a bad call, and now I'm calling you out on it. And he's like, no, you hit him. I saw you hit him. I was like, if you if you saw me hit him, then you fucking blind. And he's like, you need to shut up. So I, then my corner was like, Melvin, just leave it alone so you don't take it too far. You know, I've always had problems with, like, getting suspended for certain things, you know, being that guy. I was like, you know what? I'm going to take the high road. But I knew for a fact I didn't hit him. But despite in the moment, me thinking about hitting him, when I saw the video and saw his knees were up, I was like, well, damn, he, he basically saw me hit him, but I guess he didn't see his knees were on the ground either. So, I mean, what, what are you doing? Like, what are you getting paid for? So talk about uh, after the fight, you're obviously you're saying your emotions are running high and your corner's got to calm you down, which is understandable. But talk about afterwards, you go back to the locker room, your emotions probably still running high and I'm sure they are today. I mean, the fans, some of their emotions are running high over this decision. So what happened in the locker room and were you calm? Did they have to calm you down more? Did you get more angry in your private time? Oh, what happened? No, no, I was, I was calm. Enough. I wasn't even mad at Harrison. Like me and him, like he's a cool guy, he's a nice guy. I mean, it was probably a little too nice, but <laughs> I, didn't even have a, I didn't even have a problem with him. My problems with the ref, but I was just pissed. I'm like, dude, this is two fights in a row that I'm getting screwed. Like, technically, there's like the same thing, but in reverse. When I fought with Citizen, mm -hmm. he was swinging on me, but I wasn't even hurt. But I, I sat down on purpose so I wouldn't get hurt. And then the fight got waved off. My thing is, why are these refs making all these mistakes? I don't understand that. I mean, is it, I mean, and then how do you make mistakes like this back to back against me. Like, I mean, I, I don't know if it's on purpose, like I'm an accident. I don't know. They, I don't know what to think. They have you so, so flustered here with these two decisions that you didn't like. You're, you're already saying, well, what happens if they don't like me? I don't think that's the case. I just don't think, I think it was very unlucky. Unfortunately for you mm -hmm. that twice this has happened to you. And I'm very sorry. Well, it has it the fans. I've are been fighting for a long time, way before UFC. Yeah. I fought a lot of fights in, um, in Biloxi. At the Board of Eyes, you know, I fought all over Mississippi. Man, look, Mississippi referees have always had problems making bad calls. This, this, this didn't just start overnight or recently because of uh, the bare knuckle fight. They've been like this for years, and they always been known to have shitty referees. But why That's is just, that? I mean, you're a fighter; you've been through it. Why know, do you man, think that is? State of Mississippi. I don't know. It's just Mississippi. It's not like this is something that just happened once or twice. It's been going on for years, man. And okay. Melvin, the refs talked to you guys, uh, all the fighters, before you guys actually step into the ring. What did they say beforehand? Did he say anything? If I yell down, you're supposed to walk away? No, he it... never know. And you know, what's, you know what else they didn't do? What I think about it, they didn't come in the locker room because I didn't even know which ref I was going to have reffing me. Wow. And they didn't, come in the lock, they didn't come in the locker room and talk to me, like say, hey, when you're in there, this is what I'm looking for. This is not what I'm looking for. This is what I expect. If I see you in trouble, you know, like like Herb Dean would do if I was in the UFC. Mm -hmm. Those guys would come in there and tell us what they expect. Those referees didn't do that. Not this time or the last time. Hmm. So I think we so have. The, I think we have the footage. That's something that's not normal. I mean, I've, my, I've been fighting 23 years. I've always had fight, um, referees come in the locker room, and I guess that ref because they'll introduce themselves and say, "Hey, I'm refereeing your fight tonight. This is what I expect." You know, because every ref is different. So, you know, when you come in and then, you, you know, they come and talk to you, that's your chance to tell them, hey, well, what if I do this? What if I do that? Because you want to know how that ref thinks about Of the course. They, they have different All mindsets. Right? So that, didn't happen. Yes. that didn't happen to none of my fights in Mississippi, these past two fights. They never came and talked to me not one time. 
I didn't even, like I said, it was only two refs. I didn't even know which ref was going to ref my fight. Well, this is, this is all good to know as we as we investigate and BKFC investigates mm-hmm. the situation. Thank you for that because uh, man, I, mean, look, I didn't know that. It shouldn't even be an investigation, man. Look, it's plain. It's like a blind person can see everybody see right. it, the whole world see it, that it wasn't an illegal hit. Like, technically, if I would have hit him, he's still up off the mat. Now, speaking so Melvin, to cut you off, to... not to cut you off, speaking of that, we have it now, so we're all going to be able to watch it live together. All right. Now it's in slow motion, so we can really get a That's good look. That's the knockout right there. He's out right there. Boom. And the knee's not down, but no, you do see the t- ref. You do see the ref point yeah. to the ground. Look, Again, right, I'm not sure what that down. means. And then you see me miss the punch. Look. Yeah, you look like your forearm hit him. <clears throat> Barely. Man, they didn't even graze him, man. I'm telling you, like I hit the I hit the back of that thing that looked like a Raiders sign. One more time. That was that point. That knocked him out. Now the ref right there should have jumped in. You can see his face there. Okay, and then I missed the punch. See, I punched past him. Now, did you punch past him? Got... I'm sorry. sorry. Go ahead, Brian. <laughs> Is this you... where you got into it with uh, um, the ref on the issue? Was he screaming at you there? Is that when yeah, you guys? The first thing, the first thing he yelled was, "That's illegal. That's illegal. That's a DQ. That's a DQ." I'm like, "DQ? I didn't even touch him. I said I didn't even punch him." He started yelling DQ right after I threw that punch. Now, did you punch past him on purpose because you knew? No, man. No. I was I was trying to hit him, but then right as I was swinging, the ref yelled, and I took my eyes off him, so I, I missed the target. I mean, I literally missed the target. Okay, I didn't know if you heard the ref or, or you saw him. Look, look, look where my fist is right now. Yeah. Look where my fist is. If I punch him, wouldn't his head be into the wall? Look. Yeah, you're right. Keep I mean, yeah, he goes past him with the fist. He does. Thank you, bro. Come on, man. Yeah. Wow. Oof. And that man I think, telling me, I mean, he's standing right there looking at it and telling me, no, I saw it, I saw it. Well, if you saw it, you need to be fired. Yeah, me personally, we were talking about this before we got you on the line. I was telling Brian, I think the ref should have hopped in. I mean, if, again, in MMA, yes, mixed martial he, arts, he was, if, if someone's getting trying, ground and pound, he the ref hops in. But his eyes were still open. But, I mean, he was he was defenseless. I knew he couldn't defend himself. But I'm, I'm standing up hard. I'm didn't wait to move, and I'm waiting on the ref to do his job. And then... I said, well, fuck it. I'm right, as, right as I'm throwing the punch, no, no, no. And then he yells, that's a DQ. That's a, that's a foul. I'm like, DQ? I'm like, I just missed him. I didn't even hit him. So I was arguing about him blaming me for hitting him because I, I thought he was down. I did, but I missed. So I was like, damn, I got lucky. But when I watched the video and noticed his knees went down, man, I wish I would have hit him now because then if they, could, they still couldn't turn over. They still had to overturn it because he's not down. He's not down yet. So, so we talked about uh, your opponent, and if you spoke with him at all, and what happened in the locker room after you left the squared circle? Did did you see Wayne anywhere? Did you get to speak with him, or they just kept you away from him? The referee is Wayne, by the way. If you don't know, no, I, I didn't see him at all. Okay. I mean, I saw him like I, when I came back out later, we were dressed and just hanging out. I saw him sitting by the ring, but that was about it. I mean, what what can I say? It was not I can do at that time. No, I bro. know, but it's just frustrating. I'd imagine for you, it's frustrating for sometimes the fans that watch that kind of thing. I know Rob has one more before we yeah, get out. Yeah, Harris, Harris Stevenson is an amazing fighter, but Melvin Gillard, you looked on top of your game. You looked I very felt great, crisp. man. I, that was my last fight at eighty five. I'm going like I took two years off from cutting weight. That was the whole point of doing all this, and I'm fighting at eighty five. And I didn't mind it with bare knuckle, but I wouldn't do it with MMA. So, like I said that night, I, I had fun at eighty five. But now I'm about to start going to 75. I want to try to win the title at 75. And then hopefully in the near future, start cutting back to 65. That's about as low as I'll go. Because I want to be able to have fun and enjoy, you know, what I do. That's the only reason I stepped away from MMA. The weight cuts were getting too hard. And it was just impossible. Like, it'd probably be impossible for me to make 75. I mean, I mean, um, 55. I just don't want to cut that much weight. Sure. It, it doesn't. It, What's your say. ideal weight class? That was going to be my next question. Is what is your future? Do you plan on coming it's back right to BKFC? BKFC, BKFC, and then my next fight will be at seventy five, and maybe the next couple, and then I'm going to start working my way to sixty five. That's that's where I want to go now. All right. Well, whatever weight class you're in, we're looking forward to seeing you compete. We love watching you compete. Sorry about these last two times. Uh, you know, it's the fight game; it's very unpredictable. But we're looking forward to seeing what you do next, and we know you're going to come back, hopefully with a big win and, and look very impressive. Well, hopefully I'll come back real soon, man. I'm, I'm trying to get a, t- a quick turnaround fight because, as everybody knows, I, I do a lot better when I'm when I'm staying busy. I don't want to take three, four months off. I want to try to fight within the next month. I got out of this fight healthy. My hands are not hurt. 
So I'm ready to go. See, this is where, when we let him go here, this is where I'm opposite from him. I'd rather just take a nap after about half an hour of the show. I'm ready for a nap. This guy wants to keep going. That's why you're a warrior. That's why we're glad to have you on today. Thank you for taking the time to come on and set it straight, my man. All right. Thanks, guys. You guys be right. good. Thanks, you Melvin. Be, there goes the legendary Melvin Gillard. Uh, that, I actually learned a lot from him. That was interesting to hear his take on it. Yeah. Hey. I, I want to see him back soon, too, man. He looked great. I was really, really watching him fight, and I was really analyzing. I'm like, man, his feints look great. You know, he's baiting him good. He's going to catch him with the right, and, man, his game plan was solid. I can't wait to see him back. And it's still, when I saw that, I'm like, please don't DQ him. And Chris Lytle's talking about it. I'm like, yeah, man, they're going to they're gonna take it away from him. I'll say that. It, do our commentary team, when stuff like this goes on, I, I really enjoy them. Chris Lytle, Sean Wheelock, and it's nice because Chris has been in there before, and mm-hmm. he really adds some insight to what's going on. And he, oh, he doesn't, does. he doesn't, Absolutely. he shares his feelings no matter if they're what he doesn't care he says what he thinks and he always adds insight so i enjoy i enjoy working with them but i enjoy listening to them as well uh we have a lot more coming up today we have uh josh burns coming on who's gonna be fighting sam shoemaker and they've been going at it at least. yeah war of words as well I, what's going look, on if you like memes <laughs> josh burns has been putting out all these memes about sam shoemaker we're going to talk about that and uh, just about his fight and just see what's going on there apparently there's a there's a dislike Some bad blood boiling between them two i don't now. know if it's just i don't know if it's on one side or the other side or it's both but there's something that we saw that i'll put up when josh calls in about um Josh was saying he wanted the fight, and Sam was saying, like, I'm not going to fight a guy that lost to someone who's, like, ranked 15 in the heavyweight division. So I think that upset Josh, but I don't want to speak for him. We're going to mm-hmm. find that out in a couple minutes when he comes on. But we're going to take a break here in a second. When we come back, we're going to recap fight week and recap the things that happen, not only in the ring, but surrounding areas. Uh, stuff, some behind-the-scenes footage for okay. you as well. I believe they have that queued up. And we'll get to all that in just a couple of minutes, actually, right after this. Oh, Jesus! Oh! Line Bare Knuckle Fight Series makes its United Kingdom debut Saturday, August 28th from Blackpool in the UK. Watch as some of the best bare knuckle fighters in the UK knuckle up. Toe the Line Fight Series 3, Saturday, August 28th, only on Bare Knuckle TV. Download the app at bktvapp.com. This is Quentin the Hero Henry. If you're watching the BKFC show, sit your ass down and stay right there. This is Quentin. Man, I, I, when Quentin Henry attacks, like I get like I get like nervous. I saw what he did. I saw what happened with the Jason Fish fight. I, I saw Yo, what he did. His be- performance, man. Dude, well, we said before, Chris wow. Lieben, even that performance for having one eye and fighting Chris Lieben was amazing. So he basically came out and any any doubt that anyone may have had, I don't know why about uh, Quentin Henry, that was silenced. <laughs> you know what I mean? Dude, Jason Fish is a monster. That's what too, I mean. Man. He, I mean, I thought he was going to come in and at least knock Quentin down at least one time, man, because he was getting a little bit too close. And I think that's where, where that's where his power lies. But Quentin Henry hit him with a couple of like some of the stiffest jabs I've ever seen in my life. And I thought he broke like his, you know, his orbital or his nose because he looked really, really stunned. He caught him with a couple of jabs and he was just like, where am I? I think a Quentin Henry jab could knock me out. (laughs) <laughs> I'm not kidding you. He's, he's tough. Yeah. He's tough guy. So that, that was a, a fun fight to watch. A lot of fun at BKFC mm-hmm. 20. We're going to recap all that in just a minute here. And uh, also, we have, before we talk about that, mm-hmm. toe the line, UK. I can't do a British accent. Can you? Uh, nope. No, I, I wish I could. <laughs> can anyone do a British accent in the control room? I, I, I can't. Okay. Uh, there's What region? Oh, come on. Just give me a British Cockney, accent. Northern do a Cockney. Uh, Get Tyler Goodjohn on. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> Toe the line. There it is. The Lord. Man, man. Fucking man. <laughs> oh, there you go. There's God beer. All right, yeah. listen. So, so to, these guys are goofballs. Hey. So, toe the line. 
Total line coming up this Saturday. We, we enjoy total Eastern line. Standard time. Yeah, it's going to be good. I mean, we'll see what the UK guys got. A lot of superstars from the UK going to be on mm-hmm. there. Maybe that's someone we could be eyeing up for BKFC's main card. We'd like to see who's out there. Tell the line if you've never seen it different. It's not in the squared circle. It's in a normal ring. It's still bare knuckle, and it, it's intense fights. I mean, it wasn't the UK version, but it was, was it Frank Tate versus Bobo that one time on total line? No, man. Blew my mind. And Blew then my you mind. See, yeah, and then you see Frank Tate in the main event. I mean, it, it's so, it wasn't do, do well. It wasn't Frank Tate. It was, uh, it was Mike Kyle. I'm thinking of Frank Tate because no, of... No, Frank, no, it was Frank no, Tate. Frank Tate was, Frank was Tate. on toe the line. He was on to, he fought Teddy, Teddy, that's what it was. Teddy Webster. I, in December. I know everything. You do. Like, Evan's, every Evan's single a, event. Evan really does. I, I can't remember yesterday. Cut Evan. their camera. But regardless... We were getting yelled at in the chat anyway, but Frank Tate, uh, he's great too. We love him. the line. We're gonna speaking of Frank Tate. We're gonna be talking about um, we're gonna talking to Josh Burns just a little bit too, and that's something we're gonna talk to him about his last fight with Frank Tate and his upcoming fight with Sam Shoemaker. Yeah. Um, but toe the line very important because especially in the UK, it's interesting to see the styles of bare knuckle fighting, how they made change. We've talked about that for the last couple of weeks. How it, it, it's and that other organization better take note. We taking over. <laughs> we're like yeah, the NWO, baby. It. Shots fired, baby. Boom, boom. We taking over UK too. So look at, look at him. Look at him. You gonna go over there? You gonna ride in your horse yeah. over there? <laughs> no. The pond? They're like, what was you saying over there, mate? You was talking that smack. <laughs> There's that British accent. I'm glad you didn't do it earlier. I know it's uh, terrible. But it'll be good. Uh, Till line UK BKFC app, BKFC.com. Grab it. What's it? Four ninety nine a month. Four ninety nine. Look at all these events. And as you saw in the last show, we're actually extending the events more. Uh, we're having more events now. We're doing BKFC uh, different events as well. Sometimes Fight twice night. a month. Fight nights. We're calling them. Um, it, it's going to be awesome. If you haven't tuned in yet, you can see it up there. BKFC, of course, Total Line 3, we just spoke about that. we got BKFC 21, Omaha, excited for that. The, all these events, Game Bread Fight Club 2, uh, Fighting Championship 2, I should say. That's back in Biloxi for that. BKFC Fight Night, uh, all, excuse me, October 9th in Montana. Billings, I'm excited to go to Billings, Oh, man, Montana. this is a jam-packed card right here. And then here. you got Chad Mendez debut on the 22nd of October in Chandler, Arizona. And then BKFC's... New, New York, York debuted, City. baby. It's in our backyard, man. Dun, That's not too far dun, from here. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Take my top hat yeah, off. Yeah, man. Do some rock hat kicking. It'll be exciting. We're, we're very excited about this. Start spreading the news. Dun, 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 dun. No, no, no. Four ninety nine. That's the news. That's the big news. Just for all that. But that's awesome. What is that? Four new territories overseas: Arizona, we're Omaha, Nebraska, bro. New York. That's awesome. All right, hit the, we, should, we should say this now. Hit the like button, even though our singing's terrible. Don't hit the dislike button for the singing, because the like button will help us all, including you as yeah, fans. Yeah, if you don't hit bigger. that like button, we'll keep singing. We'll <laughs> sing all day, every <laughs> day. Be a concert. The Rat Pack here. So uh, let's talk about the tryouts that are coming up before we get into BKFC, mm-hmm. uh, the recap. Mm-hmm. The tryouts, we always say how important they are. Tryouts coming up in Florida. Kid Gotti, big fan of him, uh, undefeated. undefeated. Youngest, no, second youngest fighter now, or youngest fighter. No, he's the youngest in Is BKFC. He? Is he still? Okay. I believe so. I think uh, Zion's the youngest. Zion, 20, isn't Zion 21? Yeah, and, and isn't Jared twenty? Jared, Jared's like twenty four. You sure? I thought he debuted at like nineteen. Maybe I'm off. I'm pretty sure Jared's like twenty three or twenty. Well, regardless, I think the youngest, Shout most out, accomplished, Zion. undefeated the, yeah, yeah, the fighter in the roster. Most there we go. I like that's better. Well, one of the youngest guys in the roster. Big fan of Kid Gotti, uh, and just watching his fights. I mean, who knows what's in store for we him? Need to get him on the show. We should. Uh, it could be a Johnny Bedford fight that people are talking about in store for him. Mm-hmm. But before he gets to all that, he's going to be at the tryouts. And, and the benefit is not only maybe getting picked up and being on worldwide television for BKFC, but it's also you go there and you get to pick the brains of these guys that have done bare knuckle. So even if you don't get picked, you have these these guys that have done bare knuckle at a high level. And they're going to give you some tips, some tricks. It's almost like a little seminar, too. Mm-hmm. So definitely worth it. I think we have a lower thing to put up on the screen here. But you can find out more, I would guess, at BKFC.com. No, we don't have it. All right. BKFC.com. That's where it's going to have the info. And I'm sure Nate has it on his Instagram. He's so like, It's on Facebook. The it's event. on Facebook. Yep. Fort Lauderdale. I believe it's Carter Park this Saturday from noon to 5 p.m. Fort Lauderdale, Florida. You got a good memory, bro. Yeah. We're downloading well, it. It's going to be awesome. And like I said... If Kid Gotti's there, you should be there too because you're going to learn a lot from him. Very talented fighter. Very excited about that. We're also excited that we're coming off BKFC 20. So many good fights. Um, I was a long. I'm going to. I'm going to pause. Long. It was a. Was it, oh my days. <laughs> well, I don't know if they just heard that. This is our producer. I found it. All right. Well, there it is. There's the. If, you, if you're trying to sign, <laughs> this is so insane. If you're trying to sign up, there it is. Like they got it. Our crack team down there, baby. We're at down there. All you fighters out there, it's time. BKFC.com slash tryouts mm-hmm. if you're listening on um, on Spotify for the BKFC show. I know you're not seeing everything, so BKFC.com slash tryouts to find out more. Go learn from Kid Gotti and maybe get picked to be on BKFC. So now we'll move on to BKFC 20. There we go. <laughs> and, and what a long show. That was long. It Very was long. long. It was 
It was long, but the prelims, like I want more prelims and I know the fans want more prelims. So I am going to champion with the fans to ask for more free prelims. Let's all say it together. More free prelims. Maybe if we can get some comments, we can talk to Nate, talk to Dave Feldman, get some more free uh, content for you guys out there. Yeah. The prelims, I mean, they're always a good way to, to wet the palate, you know, get people mm-hmm. ready to moisten the palate, if you will. That's what she people said. hate that word moist. Do you ever notice that? In the comments, do you hate the word moist? People, hate, women hate that word, but moisten the palate. You know, get you ready for it. They do. It's true. Uh, get you ready for what you're about to see. And, and that's, kind of, that's, what that's, she kind said. Of, that's kind of the tease uh, before the main show. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that would be good to have another fight, and I wouldn't mind that. But when we get into, into the actual show, I mean, how do you want to do this? I, I know what I want to do. Uh, Evan Zentar, I did this last time and I enjoyed it. The Lord himself, our, content, our mighty content director. He's probably going to show his arms off at some point here. But he has this bird's eye view of what's going on uh, during the fights. He's up there. He's filming. He sees stuff we don't see sometimes. So, Evan, I always like to bow to you and go to you and, and ask you anything maybe the fans didn't see on the broadcast or something that caught your eye or even just a highlight of the night for you. Is this where I talk about Chalbeck? I don't know. Talk about whatever you want. Well, I think Chalbeck <laughs> won that fight. And I went through all my footage and I watched it back in slow motion. And you can see he didn't take a lot of damage and he did a bunch of damage to his opponent, Adam Pellerano. Roll it. Uh, roll it. So it here's my look. Here's my view. Evan's of take. The night. Here's, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, he's land. Actually, I'll just let you watch it. No, I'd like to hear you commentate it. <laughs> <laughs> he says more ums than I do. I mean, this is great. This is great footage, Evan. They don't pay me to talk. <laughs> it's good. Do we have an official, you know, strike count from? I don't remember what it was. Did they show it? Because I was backstage. They, they took a picture together post fight, and nothing. Not to take anything away from Adam Pellerano. No, it was a great fight. Um, but there was barely any damage done. It looked like to uh, John. Do we have that photo? Do we have the photo? I sent it to you. I don't know if we have, but we can. Well, that's the theme of today's show, the good, the bad, the ugly. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it, it all depends. Bad we, call, huh? We're not the judges, we're not mm-hmm. the refs, but we are the fans, and we watch closely as well as do you, so so we can comment on these things. And, and Evan, I appreciate that comment. Thank you so much for coming on. You're very welcome. <laughs> and it's Billy Joel in the background there. Is Billy Joel in the background? <laughs> Is Billy Joel yeah, in the Hi, Billy. <laughs> hey, Billy. <laughs> we always have surprise guests oh stopping my God, in the studio. That's in. awesome, man. We didn't man. start the fire, right? right. <laughs> Uptown girl. So we have the photo here for you. I mean, look, you can see there's... You can see it yeah, that yeah, I get tell it. The true story, yeah, it doesn't. Though. It doesn't always tell the true story of a fight. Some some fighters do more damage, and some just you know are more susceptible to swelling and cuts. You know, that but it's an interesting thing to look at. It is fight. an interesting thing to look at. We saw a lot of Evans' footage, and I can understand what you're saying, Evan. I can understand that, but let's just. I mean. I, I'll always throw it to the comment section, the chat. I'd love to hear what you think. Did you think? I'm sorry, I'm watching the footage yeah, now. I get he, all excited. Colorado, I know he was definitely more aggressive. Yeah, yeah. And and, I know we, we score that very highly. That's mm-hmm. what I was going to say. We talked about that, Evan, a little bit before we came on the air, and, and we both agreed that he was more aggressive. And that's that enters the scorecards, I guess. It does. I, I guess it sure so. Does. So, I mean, I don't know. I, it's a fight I wouldn't mind seeing again one day. Well, this is what? Is this Schaubeck's first professional loss of his career? Maybe. Is that correct? Uh, he has his stats on his Instagram. Hold on, I'll tell you right now. Evan, on top of it. Footage, looking up Instagram. We don't pay you to go on Instagram. We appreciate that about you, though, Evan. What? Uh, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> Evan's annoyed yeah, by so me Yeah, so pro boxing, 9-0. and Pro <laughs> MMA, 4-0. and BKFC, now 1-1. One and one. There All you right, go, there like you I go. said. Well, I mean, we'll see what happens. Uh, like I said, I think a lot of people feel a lot of things about that fight, but it was an enjoyable fight to watch, I'll tell you that much. It was. Speaking about enjoyable, man. Uh-oh, here we go. Bobo Bannon, Woo! man. Lewis Rumsey, right? Lewis Rumsey's a soldier, man. I thought he was going down a few times. And let me let me, let me me piggyback off that, because mm-hmm. I, I was riding uh, my, my... I usually have a private limousine back to the airport from BKFC, mm-hmm. but this you time... Do. Well, this time we let Lewis Rumsey, I jumped in his limo, and I was talking to him and his trainer, his coach, a little bit. And we agreed on something that I talked about with John Nutt, and I talked about with you as well. I believe that this loss... For Lewis, now Lewis didn't say this, I'm saying this. I believe that this loss is losing up. He got respect. I mean, it's not like some nobodies. Bobo Bannon's a tough dude. And you stood up there with him and you fought him. So I feel like people now look at Lewis Rumsey and, and they say, hey, you know what? He stood with him. Mm-hmm. He didn't feel like it wasn't a bad fight. It was not, a, it was a fun fight to watch. So, I mean, they're warriors and they both went at it and one man's got to win. Yeah, so Bobo look keeps looking, you know, better, better and better each fight. 
I'm not going to lie, man. I took one look at this guy. I think it was in, from his first fight. I'm like, come on, man. This guy is, he doesn't belong in this sport. Boy, did am I eating my words now. Not only does he belong in this sport, he is championship material right here, man. I can't wait to see where, you know, what his future lies. Yeah, it's, it's Each fight exciting. gets better and better with this guy, man. I love him. You can see the improvement. You can see the excitement of each fight, too. It gets better. I, I agree 100% with that. We'll see where Bobo goes. I mean, I'm excited about it. With a name like Bobo Abandon, how can he not be awesome? And, and <laughs> such a... What a, what a story, right? So I believe Eric Cow put out a story on Bobo of his background, and he's basically, you know, got the call from God, and he answered he the says. call to continue fighting. I mean, you don't hear that. You don't hear that. And his, his walkout song is hype, too, man. <laughs> I jam, jam to The it, Bible man. Belt Brawler. Yeah. What a great name, too. And I yeah. love his socks. He's always got cool socks yeah, on Bobo. Man. He's the complete package. He's cool, man. I like that, dude. And we're, we're watching some of the fight now. I mean, it, look, I mean, Lewis didn't give up. <laughs> like, that guy was going full tilt. Yeah. He just he just wasn't in the same league. We have Josh Burns joining us in just a little bit. He's going to be coming on. We're going to talk about his fight coming up with Sam Shoemaker mm -hmm. at BKFC21. BKFC.com. You can get the app. If you haven't yet, Four ninety nine a month to do that. Great price. Uh, and, and now, and now we're looking at a picture as I talk about that. What's he doing? Dancing? That's stroll, man. Is that's stroll. That that's like from those that don't know. We up here in the greater northeast. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's the mummer strut. Yeah, there you go. The mummer strut. You Look up know the what mummers. that is. No one knows the mummers is outside of Philadelphia. I don't think. Yeah, then Philly they boys. Are. These are great. All these. All these <laughs> so, so speaking of Josh Burns, we we're just talking this about him. He's got some great memes about Sam Schumacher. I didn't see any of these. I didn't see any of these Bobo memes either. This is insane. So what we need to do is come up in the chat. With a name for that strut, the Bobo something, the Obadan something. Let us know. It, drop it in the chat. We got to come up with a name great. for that now. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. So other than that, I mean, a lot of great stuff on BKFC uh, 20. I want to talk about Alan Belcher. We said I feel like he really mm -hmm. found his lane in bare knuckle. I can't wait to see what he does next uh, versus um, Tony Lopez. Now, what was interesting about this, I don't know if you recognize or saw both, but when I did interviews with both of them backstage, first Tony who, by the way, didn't want to be Tony Lopez. I believe he wanted to be called the God of Destruction Kryptonite Lopez, yeah, which I love awesome. that. He said, don't call me Tony. <laughs> he deserves that he name. He sure does. Uh, when I did my interview with him, he's talking. He's like, so tonight when I go out there and fight, um, um, uh, he couldn't remember his name. That's the warrior this guy is. He doesn't care who he's fighting. He's just going to go out there and swing. And then when I'm talking to Belcher, and I don't know if he saw it, it was, he was answering back. I don't think he was. He couldn't remember the guy's name he was fighting. These guys just wanted to fight. Yeah. You got to yeah. love that. Yeah, absolutely, man. Two oh. warriors just going at it. Lopez started off really slow. I, I think Allen came in with a game plan of knocking him out, putting a statement that he, I'm here, I'm in BKFC, everybody take notice, which he did. I'm not taking that away. But I think after the second round, he's like, I don't think Plans I'm going to be able changed. to. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to knock this guy out. Well, Alan did say to me uh, that, excuse me, that that he knew Tony Lopez how tough he was. He knew how durable he was. So mm -hmm. that was interesting to know that going in. Excuse me, Tiger Life happens. Get it? Wow. I, if you ever need to, to kind of let it out, Tiger Life helps with that too. Uh, I also want to talk about Quentin Henry. We talked about him briefly earlier and Jason Fish. What a fight that was. We don't need to get into it. Just I'm excited to see what Quentin Henry is going to do next. I know that he mentioned, I think, in the post fight that he would be looking for a championship, but he, he, he said that he recognizes Lorenzo Hunt's in front of him for that. And mm -hmm. I, I kudos to him for saying that against Hector Lombard. And I, I know he told us before he wouldn't mind fighting Lorenzo Hunt or Hector Lombard or anybody we give him because he's a warrior. He thinks he thinks Lombard's ducking him and he doesn't deserve to be the champ. Yeah, well, and yeah, I mean, there's some there's some drama in that division, man. But that's 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 the drama that happens like that that we don't know about when mm -hmm. when they come on the show or when we talk to them or, or in the post fights. When that stuff comes out, you're like, oh, that's how you really feel. Mm. Yeah. And I like real, man. I like real. Uh, before we get to Josh Burns here in a second, I want to cover one more fight because we have to talk about the main event. Uh, we're running short on time. Yep. Uh, Bantamweight, new champion from the vacated title. Uh, Johnny Bedford defeats Reggie Barnett Jr. I, I know how hard Reggie prepared. I know how much Reggie loves bare knuckle. Uh, but I guess on this night, it, it just wasn't enough. I will hmm. say this. I'd like to know what you think and what the fans think. That as I watched in the beginning of the fight, Johnny had said in their first fight that he had him at the weigh-ins. Mind mm -hmm. games. He had him beat mentally at the weigh-ins. And he said he didn't feel he had him beat mentally when they stepped in the squared circle this time. But... I think in the first round when he knocked Reggie, and I could be wrong, but in the first round he knocked Reggie down, that's got to play a little bit on your mind. And then he picked him up 
and like movement. I think he was doing that as a message. You're not going to chop, chop Corley me, mm-hmm. and I'm going to knock you down. And that's what I think was a statement from Johnny Bedford. I think so as well. I think that I think Johnny Bedford had this fight won before it even started. I think Reggie came in a little scared. I wanted to see the Reggie from BKFC one where he just jumped at Travis Thompson and he held held the back of his head and he was, you know, he was striking. He was ultra aggressive. He looked ultra fast. He looked slower. He yeah. looked slower in this fight. It's not, to, not, no, not nothing to take no, away you're from you're him. What you saw, but he also looked like he was, I mean, physically in the best shape I've ever seen him, Reggie mm-hmm. coming into this. And, and I think that, I think that Reggie, um, you know, Red, no one's going to take the loss harder than the person that did it. Reggie's mm-hmm. going to take this really hard. I, you know, I hope he's recovered from it. He comes back and fights. He was the most winning this fighter in BKFC. Now, I, I guess that record would change. I, what's, he still has a great record. Great it's record. Six, six and two. Six and two. And yeah. Johnny, what's Johnny now? Seven and is, one or six only, and one? His six only losses, you know, losses, excuse me, is to one opponent. Yeah, and it's, you know, that speaks to uh, the kind of fighter Johnny Bedford is. Mm-hmm. We're glad to have him as champion, bantamweight champion, and we can't wait to see Reggie come back. Here's some clips of the fight. We're going to get to Josh Burns here in just a couple seconds. I know he's waiting in our virtual green room a lot to talk to and unpack with him yeah i mean like you see you see bedford was holding in the back of his head he's just working the angle he's just again i, I just think say, reggie looked slower he didn't look as elusive <clears throat> excuse me to peel the curtain as back he normally does to peel the curtain back uh, uh, reggie was extremely relaxed in the back i mean more than i've seen him he just he seemed very confident and he'd done all mm-hmm. the work to prepare Johnny was doing some, I guess, wind sprints kind of before I talked to him, and he was ready to go too. It was just exciting to see both these guys go at it. And, and that's and that's that's what's so crazy. When as I'm watching this fight, I'm like, it's round three. Reggie Barnett's cardio is second to none. Oh yeah, like oh yeah. rounds one through five, you wouldn't know the difference unless you saw the number next to it. You would not know the difference, and it just looks like he just, you know, looked. Can I add in that um, Bedford has an absolute granite chin? Yeah, that dude can take a hit. Yeah, he, I, I agree with you 100% with that, Evan. I mean, he sure can. And I, I also think that aside from that, before we get to Josh Burns, is the last thing. Then we have him wait. Let's get to him. Uh, in the post fight, I thought it was interesting. Johnny said he'll chase Dat. He wants Dat. Oh, he I wants mean, that fight, he man. He wants really to, wants that fight. He wants to. So we're going to see where that goes. He had said. Get uh, his revenge. I think he had said before if Palomino gets Dat first, he's upset because he's going to get. He said he's going to get like the um, the fallout of it. You mm. know what I mean? And uh, by the way, Palomino, if you're watching, we're thinking about you, my friend. So let's move on to um, Josh Burns, who's on the phone. A lot with Josh. Yeah. There's some bad blood here. Welcome to the show. In his Tiger Life shirt, I got my Tiger Life cam. We're all tigered up. Uh, Josh Burns, how you doing, my friend? Doing good, brother. How are you? We're really good. We're ha- happy to have you on. Before we get into it, I-, I must congratulate you. What, about a month or two ago, you're engaged. Yeah, yep, got engaged. So, so you have like fifteen thousand children. Uh, <laughs> that is, that any any plans correct. of having any more with the woman you were engaged with? Do you have no. any with her? No, no, no. I think we're done. <laughs> well, you got to concentrate on fighting, and that's what I want to talk to you about today, Josh. I, like I said, I'm glad to have you on, but it just seems to me I'm going to be blunt with you. You don't like Sam Shoemaker, right? No, I think yeah, I think Sam Shoemaker's a little bitch. Like he don't he he's not a, he's just a little bitch. Bottom line, watch his fights. Watch when Joey Beltran beat his ass. He stormed out the ring like a little hoe. Kenzie Morrison beat his ass. Storm stormed out the ring. Uh, everyone that's ever beat him, he he don't congratulate him. He you know run out the ring like a little bitch. So he's just that little white boy privileged little bitch that lives in the Ozarks that uh, claims that he's a hillbilly. But I'm gonna give him a real country ass woman because I grew up on a farm. So he'll see what real country is all about. Come fight night. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're looking forward to seeing it. I don't think, from what I can see, I don't think Sam likes you too much either. <laughs> I, mean, uh, I don't know if that's because you fired shots at him or you guys just don't get along. I, I've never seen your interactions. Usually I can kind of eavesdrop backstage or in the locker rooms and see what's going on. I haven't really seen much interaction with you guys. I do know that I saw Rob uh, recently, and we're going to get into your memes in a minute. Don't you worry about that. They're very creative, Josh. Um, so I saw uh, something that you had said, something that Sam had said. Let's put up first what you had said. There's, there's a long quote. And the people at home can, can read that themselves. We'll throw that up first, and then we'll show what Sam said back to you. Now, this was on Instagram. Uh, I mean, I, I'm going to go quick with this because there's people listening that can't see what it says. But basically, you were saying, um, don't just look at our beautiful faces. Hit the like button if you want to see uh, the damn thing finally go down, meaning you and Sam Shoemaker. And there's no hot f- hiding <laughs> There's no hiding the fact, old country, Sam Shoemaker, and I really don't see eye to eye, and both would like to prove that we can put the other to sleep. I have a hundred percent KO ratio with with uh, win KO. Excuse me, hundred percent win ratio with the KOs, and I'd like to keep it that way. 
So what do you guys say? Do you want to see that fight? And I guess the fans responded. They, they seem to want to see that fight. But I guess Sam must have answered you back when you put that up. I, and we have that, too, what Sam said. Uh, and this is interesting because I don't know Sam to speak out like this. So I would guess he probably doesn't like you. And again, if you're watching on YouTube, you can read it. But I'll try to read it without my cheaters on. He said, I'll be fighting to climb back up the ladder, not to take a step backwards by fighting a guy who just not only lost, but got KO'd by someone who isn't even in the top 15. Then there's some clown emojis, which I like clowns. Uh, no disrespect to Tate, but he, you know, he proved to be a tough guy and he moved up the ladder. But Burns, nah, you can't expect me to fight someone like me. You can't expect to fight someone like me. Obviously, I can't read today. Sorry. Uh, ranked in the top five, who just barely lost the decision to the champ after your last KO loss. Keep winning, big mouth, because I definitely want to shut you up when you get back into uh, the championship run. So you guys have already had some words. Um, I mean, how you didn't you weren't responding to that that I saw online. How do you respond to what Shoemaker said to you? No, it's, it is what it is, man. Like at the end of the day, uh, <laughs> we've been scheduled to fight a few times, mm -hmm. and uh, only twice have we actually signed. This is the third time that was actual physical signed contract. Uh, but there's other times that I've been called by Nate Shook. Hey, let's go three weeks and you fight. Fuck it, let's do it. Then I get a call back. Well, you know, Shoemaker, he doesn't care if he loses. He doesn't want to look bad doing it. So at the end of the day. He knows what's coming. He can he can bullshit all he wants, but at the end of the day, you know, truth's gonna be told that night on the tenth of September when I put my chin my, my fist on his chin and uh, he goes to sleep. Because remember, he ain't no he's been knocked down, but he's never been put out. So I'm looking to do something that's never been done. You had two previous, I guess, supposed contracts signed. Are you saying Sam pulled out of those two other fights, or what do you think happened? Do you think he was scared and? No, no. So the first one was not his fault, nor mine. Kansas shut it down the day before weigh-ins. The second time mm -hmm. we were supposed to fight was in Selena, I believe, Kansas. And uh, the week of the fight, it was Monday, is when Nate and Dave let me know that uh, he had pulled out because he had tested positive for COVID. And, uh, you know, I seen him on the show the other day where he's like, well, you know, we all had to do a, a COVID test before we came to fight, which is a lie. We did the fight. We do the total COVID test. And we actually get there. We get there. We do it there a day before the weigh-ins. So, but uh, he was a week prior out with his friends and family out on a, on a hunting trip. So real professional. We're in a pandemic. You're out there fucking around shooting little possums and chickens and, uh, you know, not taking it serious like a fucking fighter. So, look, the guy's got holes fucking huge holes in his game he's 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 got a huge head he comes from fucking he comes from nowhere he's got he's got no competition every time he's fought anybody of substance they beat him well maurice jackson beat him i don't know how they they gave him the split decision win but the boy listen we, we're gonna separate the men from the boys come september 10th and trust me i'm gonna fuck this kid up pretty bad wow okay <laughs> what the <laughs> Rob's like, uh... yeah i wasn't expecting that uh the last time we spoke you know everything seemed a little cordial between you two but obviously something has happened since then what did you see at his last performance you, you're saying you see a lot of holes in his game plan excuse me what did you see against beltron that you know makes you think that you can be victorious over shoemaker well simple he's easy to hit one he can hit I mean, let's, let's be honest. I mean, I like Joey. Joe Beltran's a good dude, but Joey, he pity powders. He ain't got power. Anyone and everyone that's ever fought him, anyone the, in the, you know, in the sports industry, they know he pity powders. He's just got great conditioning. And Joey smacked him around like a little bitch. So, and then Joey's not the physically strong specimen, and Joey was physically running him around that ring. And, uh, you know, as far as holes in the game, you know, you'll get to see that on the 10th. But, I mean, I'll point out things that were obvious. You know, he said that, oh, I had a close a close loss to Joey. No, you didn't. You lost four rounds to one. You came out the first round, and I even said it on I said it on social media. I said, shit, Sam Shoemaker looked great round one. And then all of a sudden, he just took a shit and was sucking wind like, like he didn't belong in there. And Joey just started pushing it on him. So at the end of the day, he's small. He's, he's really not a heavyweight. I think he probably should be fighting 205. I mean, what he weigh in his last fight, 237. And look at the guy. He's got a little pot belly still. So they make fun of my belly. I walk around at two, 295. Okay. I have to cut to get down to this fight to fight this little turd. So his best chance is to run. And he's going to try to throw his little spaghetti arms at me with his pencil neck. Trust me, as soon as I touch his goofy ass, that big ass, I know why he's got that big beard. You know, that big beard is to cover that little skinny neck so he don't look like a fucking douchebag. You know, like kind of like a like a marshmallow with a toothpick and you put another marshmallow on that's that Sam Shoemaker put a little fuzzy on it there you go he hides that little pencil neck so I'm gonna find that pencil neck and he says oh keep talking shit big mouth you listen motherfucker I guarantee you run from me I guarantee you run from me the second I hit you you're gonna run 
you're gonna run like a little bitch from fucking Catholic Church on a Saturday. I'm telling you right now, you're gonna run. Dude, I'm I'm excited about the <laughs> weigh-ins, too, man. I, mean, <laughs> I want the weigh-ins and a fight to happen this weekend. Yeah, let's Jeez. go, man. BKFC.com, you can watch that. That's the co-main event coming up. Of course, Dakota Cocker versus Marine, the Marine, excuse me, Mike Richmond on top. Uh, you know, Josh. You have been just, I mean, this has been going on for months, I feel like. It seems like months on Instagram. Dropping these memes. And I knew it was bad, but I didn't realize how intense it was mm-hmm. with you two. So I, I know we have some of the memes. I think the first one that you dropped, you keep saying he's going to run. It run. It was, oh, the, no, this is the commit to the fight one, the Uno card. And look, <laughs> now, 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 are you making these memes yourself or somebody helping you? Come on, don't lie, because these are no, incredible. No, no, I'm making them, bro. Me, me and my team, you know, we go through. I just, I clarify a few people to make sure that 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 I'm on point and I'm not being a retard. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, listen, I've been in this sport a lot longer than anybody in this game. Okay, I got 12 fights of bare knuckle, and at the end of the day, uh, when they don't understand, I know everybody, and everybody knows me. The problem is they like me more. So when his manager and his people reach out and talk to people, and they say, "Oh, well, we're gonna pull out three weeks out," you know, undisclosed injury, Bernie doesn't deserve, deserve the fight anyways. So what do we do? We say, "Okay, cool. We're not gonna go cry to nobody. We're not gonna go talk to nobody. We're just gonna start putting the heat on. Let people know he's a running man. Let them know that he's gonna run for the fight. He don't want the fight." So at the end of the day, we just push the heat up, put the heat, you know, turn turn the heat up, and uh, as we did. You know, his management team was real good in pulling him back because he he gets real personal and gets real, you know, gets real red and uh, starts getting, you know, getting real mad. So they, they pulled him back. And then, as you can tell, the meme wars became between me and his management team of four people. So me versus four people, and I'm still whooping their ass. So it is what it is. Now, before we let you go, uh, we should have talked about this in the beginning. But, uh, you know, when he was saying to you in that one thing that we read earlier, the quote that you don't deserve the fight. Uh, after the Frank Tate, Tate performance, excuse me, two questions. One, why do you deserve the fight? And two, can you explain kind of what happened in the Frank Tate performance? Because I have a hypothesis, but I don't know if I'm correct. And I'll tell you what that is after you tell me. All right. So uh, let's start. Let's start with uh, obviously Frank Tate fight. Uh, we can change the fight, you know, and the same thing for Frank, though. It was a change of opponent. But the thing was, Frank was fighting a guy my size anyway. So he didn't have to change much. Frank and I have talked. Frank and I are boys. He's a good guy. At the end of the day, I had a great camp, was in phenomenal shape, went out there. And to be honest with you, I had no damn clue. The lights went off for him. He came out, and it was just like I was stuck in mud. And I don't care who you are. Frank Tate's probably one of the hardest dudes I've ever been hit by. And as you can tell, I got a chin. You're not knocking me out. But he straight up knocked me on my ass multiple times, and that had never happened before. It was just sheer force that knocked me down. And, you know, got to a point, and, you know, Sam Schumann goes, oh, and the guy didn't quit. Well, at the end of the day, you got to be smart, you know, live the fight another day. And, you know, I could have got up again and I keep getting up, my head swelling. And I'm just like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. And Kate's the better man that night. And it could have been just the fact that he knocked me with that big ass. I mean, he's got freaking lunch boxes for hands and uh, yeah. he hits damn hard. And I was just standing there. So, you know, as far as that, uh, I think that's, it was just what it was, you know, it's nothing against Frank. Frank just started faster and better. And this bare knuckle he hit once anything can change. And as far as deserving it, give me a fucking break. Okay. Uh, you know, they always dispute my record and all that good stuff. Well, th- this is a new sport and it only goes off of the people that report it. So you go to box rec, it's, it's so fucking wrong. It's, it's hilarious. So I'm seven, three, and two. And at the end of the day, I had a loss. Sam Schumacher got his ass beat by Joey four rounds to one. He wasn't even close. He thinks it was close. It wasn't even close. Anyone that watched that fight besides Sam Schumacher, uh, as we, you know, I, I try to be proper. So we'll just say eggplant writers. So, uh, besides those cats. Everyone knows that he got his ass whooped, so he didn't belong in there. And every time he stepped up to higher level competition, he's always got his ass beat. So I'm looking to do that again. And uh, but this time I'm looking to do something that no one else, no one has done before, and that's put him to sleep and get him to be done. All right. Well, we're looking forward to that. I will say that I thought I'm way off here. I thought you would say this. I thought early in the Frank Tate fight that when you got knocked down, it looked like you hit the back of your head on a on a ringed cable. I didn't know if that uh, kind of played into mm-hmm. knocking you silly or what. Uh, that was one yeah, of my well, hypotheses. Not that did not to run just and not cut you off, but look at the end of the day, a fight's a fight. I don't give a fuck if I fell on a damn knife. At the end of the day, it's a fight. I'm mm-hmm. in the ring. It doesn't matter what happens. The man won. You know, you can't take it away from Frank. And uh, I didn't perform, so you know, I'm looking to come back, get back in the ring, and perform. And you know, it's my fault. And whether I hit my head on the ring, you know, why I hit my head on the ring is because I let him hit me, knock me on my ass. So at, at the end of the day, it's my fault. So you know, nothing against Frank. Yeah, yeah, nothing against Frank. Frank's the man, and uh, I love Frank. He's a great dude. We're probably going to have a barbecue here, but I know Frank's got some people in his sights, and I uh, look forward to those fights. 
And before you guys cut me off, I wanted to say, you know, <laughs> prayers out to Palomino. I want, yes. you know, Palomino, hope he gets better. You know, he's not, Absolutely. not doing well. And uh, he's a great champion. I know he's going to fight through it, but, uh, you know, just send out loud prayers and love to his family and himself. We agree with that. And look, he's, he's th he thinks we're going to cut him off. Well, he's right. We are cutting you off here in a second. Good. You're, you should be a broad broadcaster your next career. You can kind of feel how it's going here. Uh, but I will say it was great having you on. And I usually ask this, and I really want to ask this question to end it. Give us your prediction for the Sam Shoemaker fight. Well, I honestly believe that uh, I think he's going to run. And I think I stopped him by the third round. And I, and I think he thinks that he's going to stop me. And you listen to his managers and all his whole hype boys, you know, they're like, oh, the only people that ever beat him is hug him. Okay, cool. If I can, I'm going to throw his ass out the ring. I don't care if you deduct me a point. I'm going to throw him out the fucking ring. I'm going to throw him on the ground. I'm going to show him what a man is, and then I'm going to knock his ass out. But I like to take him to the third round because he thinks I'm a 30-second fighter. That's what he thinks. He thinks I can't go more than two minutes. So it's all good. But at the end of the day, it'll probably be in the third round unless, I mean, unless he truly has a glass jaw. But we're going to find out. We're going to find out. Oof, man, can we can we fast forward to September 10th now? Like, I, I want to I want to watch it right now. You just got me so excited for that. We're looking forward to it. Josh Burns, thanks for coming on, man, my friend. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate it. Right on, guys. Oh, have a good one, guys. Wait for that. You have a good one, too. I can't wait for that, Rob. BKFC.com if you Whoa, want to get the app. Man. It's just four ninety nine a month. Of course, on top, you have Dakota Cochran, who we've seen him fight before, Amazing Fighter, versus the Marine Mike Richmond. And you have Sam Shoemaker versus Josh Burns. A packed card. BKFC.com. You see the graphic up there? You got to get there, man, because I was excited for the card before we had Josh on. But again, like I said during the interview, I didn't know that it went that deep. I, Dude, I, yeah, my, my jaw has been like open the entire time. I was under the understanding or impression that they are extremely cordial and, you know, the memes are the memes. I didn't know it was that deep. And yeah, I bet there's some bad blood. And yeah, I'm curious how Sam feels about this stuff. And if Sam's going to fire back at him after he hears about this or Sam's yeah. just going to kind of, you know, sometimes fighters, they feel, but they play it cool. So they don't look like they're, you know, getting mentally messed up. So we'll sure. see what happens. Maybe we get Sam on at some point. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of unpack all that. But for now, I mean, do we have anything else to get to, Rob? I would love to get the, he yeah, the, baby, baby. Can't talk the heavyweight either. rankings this week. So okay. if we can get them. Um, yeah, man, it's really interesting to see the September 10th fight between them. That's going to be a it's gonna be a very decisive fight. You think? Mm -hmm. I mean, Josh Burns thinks. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and I think that's all we have for today. I mean, we have enough nothing else to get to. I do want to do a shout. I do want to do. That's hard. Do wish. Do, I hate saying that. I do want to give a shout out. There's a guy that came from, I think, Chattanooga. It was like a seven or eight hour drive. He's a kid. He's never been to his bare knuckle. Well, if you're going to do shout outs, man, you better run through. We, we've got some people to give some shout well, outs. I shouted out Big Ben. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Let me give this shout. Yeah. We have a yeah. photo. Sorry. So this guy came from, photo? Like, he came from like eight hours away. He wanted me to sign his Tiger Life can. Big fan of the show. <laughs> That's, That's awesome, That's Benjamin, man. man. He had a top hat on. He met the BKFC girls. He met the president. I brought him down ringside, showed him around. I met Lord Evan Zentor. I met him. Uh, Dave, 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 uh, Dave Feldman so met him. That's so cool, was awesome. man. That's awesome. Yeah, it was cool. He was he was a lot of fun. Uh, but in, in a, what do you say? An eight hour drive, and then he sent me this wonderful message. He's talking about oh, yeah, starting a podcast now too. It. We've yeah. inspired him to start a podcast. That's awesome. God bless man. you, my friend. Um, I hope you find get a great your part tickets. Of what I have. Show up. If I'm there, I'll introduce you to Brian, and he'll show you around. So as many <laughs> people as uh, that comes to these events, listen. I will take care of you, and I will dish you, you off dish to Brian. <laughs> I had 10 minutes till we went live on TV. And Benjamin, shout out to you uh, for being such a fan, traveling a long distance with yeah, your friends, awesome, and shout out to them. It was really nice to meet it's you phenomenal. guys. And, and Rob's joking around, I know, but we, we do. We really enjoy meeting the people. Because you guys who watch the show and listen to the show on Spotify, here. they're the real, real hardcore fans. So we love talking to them. I love them, man. Who Especially else did you want to shout out? You got all these shout outs, you said. Mission accomplished. Oh, we love Big them. I ben. talked to them, too. Mission accomplished. I talked to them at the we talked to them at the hotel lobby. Knuckle Up Podcast. Yeah, we like know. Knuckle Up Podcast. Yeah. Uh, Evan, who was the other? Uh, where do we get our information from? Uh, well, I like I watch the Knuckle Up guys. The... Um, What's their name? Phil and all those guys. D's Knuckles, that show. D's Knuckles. Okay, they yep, everything yep. before we do. Yeah, man, they get the scoop. <laughs> yeah, who do they have on the inside? I don't know. Oh, they got we somebody, got a leak man. in this organization. Yeah. Somebody is leaking it out, but no, those guys are great. Yeah. Yeah. I was watching last night. I was catching up on... Uh, yeah, on all the stuff, and we we do we appreciate. I mean, because that's only going to help bare knuckles. So we appreciate mm -hmm. all the support with the podcast, and don't think we're not watching. Look at what you have to say. Thank you so much for uh, helping be a part of this. We're all part of it together, and that's what I love about the organization and how we're growing together. It's it's incredible. So with that, I mean, did you get all your shout outs out, Rob? I mean, you can't forget Joe awesome. Miggs too. Yeah, Joe yeah, Miggs. Shout to Joe Miggs. Man. You know, Joe Miggs was filming a movie. He's like a mobster or something. Yeah, movie. dude, not in real life, star. Joe. Right? 
just in the movie. He knows a guy. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> so thank you for all the support. We appreciate you guys. And uh, with that, I think we're done. So uh, thanks to the guys in the control room. Thank you to my main man, Rob. Appreciate it, man. One, more, one big shout out to my man in the comments section. Big shout out to Pfizer Johnson. Thanks, Pfizer Johnson, for tuning in. Pfizer Johnson, whoever you are, thanks for tuning in. And we cheers you with our Tiger Life. And we say see you next week when we knuckle up. Put like, comment, subscribe.